Good morning, everyone. How are you? You're all good? My name is Brian, and I get to play here every day. And I was so glad that all you came to play with us today. Because we've got a cake. Well, why do you have a cake? It's a birthday, right? We have cakes for birthday. And maybe you see these nice hats all these people have on, too. They have birthday hats on. Because it's our 25th birthday. So do you remember 25 years ago when we opened the door for the first time? No? Do you remember? No, no. That's a long... Oh, you do, though. Do you? You know, we have Bob up here. He's been a member with Science World since, what, 1988? Wow. Well, and thank you. And he still comes. Isn't that wonderful? And he says he visits every feature exhibit and every new film we have in the Omnimax Theater. That's terrific. And I know a lot of you come often, too. But you know, we have, we have someone with us here today that if it hadn't been for her, none of us would be here. Because she started this science center way down on Granville Street, and then after the World's Fair, it's a big party that they had here in Vancouver in 1986, a long time ago. She and a bunch of her buddies said, we should have a science center in Vancouver. And they did. And I'd like to introduce you to Barbara Brink. Barbara's gonna tell us a little bit about that time 25 years ago. And what might have happened that day, just like this event, wasn't it, Barbara? Hi there. How many of you are eight years old? Put up your hand. Aha. Uh -huh. How many of you are 10 years old? Put up your hand. Not too many today. Okay, so what happened was I was on a trip to Toronto with my two sons and I had to figure out what to do with them and I went to my first science center, so there you are. But it wasn't fast. It took us 10 years to get into this building and build it. So if I have a message for you, if you have a dream, stick with it. Lots of people will tell you you can't do it, but if you want to do it, keep going. That's the most important thing. Now, you are one of some very special people here today, but we've had millions of little people like you, and they've all enjoyed being able to come to this Science Center, and most importantly, all over the province, they've been able to come to this Science Center. So thank you for inviting me to be here to go for your birthday party. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. And just in a minute, we're gonna ask Barbara to help us talk this day. But you know, since that day, 25 years ago to today, Science World has, has flourished and, and we welcome all you people because of wonderful support we've had from the community and so many leaders. I'd like to introduce you to Walter Sedgwick. He's the current chair of the board. Barbara was the chair back in 1989 and today this guy's the boss. Sir. Thank you, Brian, and thank you, Barbara, for that uh, perspective. It's my very great pleasure to be the chairman of the board and to be enabling Brian and his team to live those dreams that we all still have, that Barbara started with and we very much have now. So um, I want to thank Barbara for starting it and uh, just let you know that we all love this place and love the enthusiasm that the management team has and are looking forward to going forward with it. Thank you, Walter. But you know, you guys didn't come here today to listen to us. You came, I bet you, for two reasons. One is to see some really cool science demonstrations, and the other is to have a piece of cake, right? Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna have Walter and Barbara cut the cake, and after that, they're, we're gonna take it aside, and we're gonna cut it up. And while we're cutting it up, Stefan and his friends here, we're gonna try something. And we've never done this before, but just for you folks today, we're going to do 25 science demonstrations. That's one for every year, and we're going to do that in five minutes. So you better watch quick, because they're going to go boom, 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 boom. But, so that'll happen after we cut the cake, okay? So if I could ask Barbara and, and Walter to come back here, and ceremoniously, and carefully. And by the way, this, this cake was made for especially by the Swiss Bakery. The Swiss Bakery is just up on, on 3rd Avenue, if any of you know it. It's a wonderful place. Uh, Michael, the, uh, the, the head baker there, uh, created this cake for us. It's one of a kind. It's got the dome on top. And we're going to ask Barbara and Walter now, please, to put the first cut in the cake. Happy birthday, Science World.
Uh, now that is in a front page. Walter, you, I've heard you sing before today. Would you like to lead us all in singing Happy Birthday to Science World? I think so. Do you want to sing Happy Birthday? Okay, here we go. Now, man, can, you, can you and your crew help us? Come on. Come on. Okay. Thanks very much, Brian. And uh, hi, everybody. So what we said is going to happen is we are going to attempt to do 25 science demonstrations in five minutes. We're just going to take these balloons off the stage so we don't accidentally uh, create a flaming balloon arch uh, or anything like that. Some of these demos are going to be a little bit more epic than others. Some of them are going to be very quick. But we have five science presenters today. Oh, bowling balls. They betray us. So we're going to start, this is how we're going to ask the audience to keep track of all 25 demos. So this is what our set list looks like. And we're going to cycle for five different science presenters. We're going to start with Kristen, and after Kristen's going to go Ivan, and then Bronwyn, and then Jess, and then Rhoda. And we're going to do that five times in five minutes and try and do this. But we're going to ask before we start the show, before we start this demo, that everyone do their very best to stay out of this red zone because some of these demos are going to be quite dangerous. If there's anything that looks like it's going to explode, feel free to cover your ears. You're not going to have much warning for those kinds of things. So if you don't like loud noises, if you don't like fireballs, this might not be the best place for you. We've got to warn you. We're going to start a counter on the TV. We're going to make this happen. You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if we're ready, but we're going we're gonna to go for it. I'll take the mouse away. All right. Kristen, you ready with demo number one? We're going to invite you guys, as every demo happens, to count out one, two for each demo, okay? Keep track of this. Okay. On the count of three. One, two, three. So we're starting with light and podium, which is a mix of fuel, oxygen, and heat. We now have a chemical reaction in a cannon that is going to result in a very loud bang. We now have a tuning fork that you can't really see it do anything, but if we give it a whack and put it in water, the waves create water, which comes out. Now we have a spinning platform used in our locomotion show, which if somebody stands on it with their arms out and someone else gives them a spin, they don't move very fast, but if they put their arms down, they will go much faster. And then they slow down and then they go faster again. <laughs> That's angular momentum that works. Now we have two balls that when we drop them from the same height, they bounce at the same height. We can transfer momentum up the basketball into the tennis ball, sending it flying into the backboard. Now Kristen's gonna come up, she has a $20 bill that she lit on fire, but it's got water and alcohol on it, so the bill doesn't burn up. The water absorbs the heat. Now we have a piece of flash paper that completely disappears. When you light it on fire, a puffball that will not go inside of a bottle because it is full of air, air takes up space. Now we have some chemicals that when we mix them together and shake them, they create a blue color change. Now we have a bag which is when we put it up to our mouth and we breathe in it, it doesn't really fill up, but if you pull it away from your face and you blow into it, you take the air from the balloon out and it goes inside of the bag. Normally when you put a flame to a balloon, it pops, but if you have a balloon full of water and you put a flame to it, it doesn't pop because the water inside absorbs all the heat. Now with that like the podium we had before, if you throw it through some matches, you can create a fireball in the air. We have a pop bottle with some water in it, and if we give it a few cups of air without water, normally it'd go up your feet, and now it launches way up to the ceiling. We have a whoopee cushion! <laughs> Which pushes air out of it, makes a lot of vibration, but makes a silly sound. Now we have a very sharp needle that Rhoda's threatening me with. Normally you would pop a balloon with a sharp needle, but Rhoda's going to put the balloon, or put the needle through the end of the balloon, and push the needle oh, into one end, but not into the other end. Give it down. 
Now we have two chemicals that when we mix them together, they give off a kind of energy we haven't seen yet. Light energy and another color change. Pull away, Kristen! Now we have a plate that is an example of gyroscopic stability when Ivan's physically fast on the stick on his finger and fast on the stick again. Ivan's just a fancy man. Now we have two rainbows that look like they're different heights when you hold one on top of the other, but actually, they're the same height. <laughs> an example of a cognitive illusion. Now we have beads that their momentum you pull on this pair as the right out of the cup if you put them in the same format. Now we have another balloon coming out. And balloons normally when you blow on them, and then you hold them up, the balloon will stay blown up. But when Rhoda lets go of the bottom of this one, it doesn't fly around. It stays up, and even if she turns it upside down, it doesn't do that, because there's a marble inside. It's an evil prank. Now we have a device called a Van de Graaff generator that builds up a static electric charge. When Kristen stands on it, that charge goes into her body and cannot escape. It tries to get out through her hair, which makes her hair go crazy. Now Kristen's going to get off the ball, and Ivan's going to show you electron bolts flying through the air, shocking him in the hand while he makes silly faces. Ivan's going to peel out, and Bronwyn's going to go on the ball with a handful of Rice Krispies, and the electrons and Rice Krispies are going to kill each other and make them fly out of her hand. Now Jess has a balloon that is full of hydrogen, which is like helium in the sense that it is lighter than air, and our balloon is floating, but different than helium, this balloon is explosive, which she takes a big shot, it makes a loud boom, and finally, for our last demo, we have a giant slingshot, stretched across the stage, and a very faithful, very beloved science world rubber chicken. Oh, we got tons of time. I clicked the mouse. Pull back. And release in a release of potential transferring into kinetic energy. Okay, three, two, one, shut down! On to the second floor of 25 demos in my forehead. Lost the five minutes. Ridiculous. I can't get the mouse back. I can't get the mouse. I can't get the icon back. It's too weird. There. there. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have a round of applause for our science employees? Thank you. I've got me to head rush.